Okay, stand by one minute. Okay, good evening. It is now 7.01 p.m. and welcome to this edition of Boca Raton. It will happen. They say it can happen. It will happen. <laughs> oh, yes. Good evening. It's now 7.02 p.m. and welcome to this week's edition of Community Conversation. We have a jam-packed program for you tonight. And we hope you leave here fired up to make the next move that will make you better prepared for life in this global society. Tonight's show is designed to provide you, especially our high school 11th graders and 12th graders or seniors with information that you need as you prepare for your final year in high school. It is also our hope to give those of you in the seventh through 10th grades an idea of what to expect as you get closer to that final year. Our first guest tonight is Dr. Deborah L. Robinson, who is our advocate on the school district of Palm Beach County Board. She's our board representative. She's also a medical doctor and an ardent fighter for our kids. Let me first apologize for butchering your name on the flyer doc. I take full responsibility for that, and it will never happen again, at least on community conversation. Our other guests are Ms. Farrah Latour, who has worked for many, many years as a guidance counselor at the high school level. She has worked in Royal Palm Beach, Village Academy, and Boynton Beach High, and after seeing where she could be more effective, in preparing our students earlier for life after high school, she moved to JFK Middle School where today she's still using her expertise to prepare our young kings and queens. We have a long time champion in the trenches Someone whom I have a lot of respect for, Mr. Tim Snow from the George Snow Foundation, which has created opportunities for hundreds of our local students to pursue a college education over the years. Um, Maria, I'm just getting some, my, my technical director here, Maria, I'm getting uh, a uh, message that there is a delayed reaction going on. So for those of you guys on WebEx, we are being broadcast live on Boca Raton TV. So there may be a little delay in your reaction. I... I'm actually live right now. Are you on the line? You're in. Okay. Still trying to iron out the bugs here, guy. The first this is the first night for us to be uh, streaming live on live TV. Hey, this happens, okay? This happens, so bear with us. We're gonna get this right, guys. We're gonna get this right. Um, I'm on the meeting. I think it says waiting for me to host to let you in. Again, this is called ironing out the bugs, guys, so Bear with me. Dina, can you can you get them in? Are you in, Miss Latour?
Bear with me a minute, Guy. One minute, please. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. So I see Ms. Latour has joined us. And Dr. Robinson, let's we're trying to get Dr. Robinson in. You have it. Okay, go ahead and let her in. Well, they are trying to, you said the WebEx is. Okay, guys, let's. Uh, Mario, they're all in now. You want to? You want to start from the top? Yes. Yes. We got to. 
start from the top. So let's. She's uh she's she's coming in, uh Mario. Give her a few more. Okay, guys, just one. Dr. Robinson got it. Right. Okay, this is the real deal. Okay, guys, it's now 7.15 p.m., and I, let me welcome you to this week's edition of Community Conversation. Let me say to the young people on the line, things like this happen. Okay, this is called ironing out the bugs. This is the first time we're broadcasting. Actually, we're broadcasting live on, uh, on, on TV. Things like this happen. In life, we got to have a plan, a backup. I see Eric looking over there smiling. we got to have a plan, a backup, and a contingency plan. Okay? That's all right. We have our, our, our speakers here tonight, and we're going to get going with the, with the program. We have a jam-packed program for you, and we hope that you're going to leave here tonight fired up to make the next move that will make you better prepared for life in this, our global society. I say that tonight's show is designed to provide you, especially our high school 11th graders and our seniors, graduating seniors, with the information that you're going to need as you prepare for your final year in high school. We also hope to give you, those of you in the 7th through 10th grade, we hope to give you an idea of what to expect as you get closer to that final year of high school. Our very first guest tonight is Dr. Deborah L. Robinson, who is our advocate, a strong advocate for us on the school district of Palm Beach County. She's our board member for the school district of Palm Beach County. She's also a medical doctor, 
and an ardent fighter for our kids. Let me apologize, Doc, for butchering your name on the flyer. I take full responsibility for that, and it will never, ever, ever happen again, at least on Community Conversation. <laughs> our other guests are Ms. Farrah Latour, who has worked for many, many years as a guidance counselor at the high school level. She was at Royal Palm Beach in the past, Palm Beach High School. She was down here at Village Academy. But after seeing where she could be more effective in preparing our young people for life after high school, she moved on over to JFK Middle School, where she is using her expertise to groom these young kings and queens. We also have a dear friend of mine, longtime champion in the trenches, someone who I have a lot of respect for, Mr. Tim Snow from the George Snow Foundation, which has created opportunities for hundreds, if not thousands of young people to pursue a college education over the years. Our final guest tonight will be Mr. Eric Aquino from the Community Foundation of Palm Beach and Martin County. And his organization administers scholarship for students to pay for college. You're gonna hear more from them later on. I see we have with us um, one of last week's guests, Miss Nia Brown, who's a 17 year old rising senior at Atlantic High School. She's also the recipient of the inaugural or the very first scholarship to the presti prestigious Harvard University's medical science telemed high school program. Now that's a mouthful. In other words, doc, it's a medical science program that's being done virtually for high school students. Glad to have you hang out with us this afternoon, Ms. Brown. Uh, tonight's program is produced by our very own John Aldina. Around here, we like to call her Ms. Dina Bazu, and she's a student at Atlantic Community High School, as well as the Milagro Center. Let me just pause and say, you know, we do this, we've been doing this program here now since February, and uh, since late February, actually the 16th. And I'm just, I just so happen to be the face you see on Friday afternoon, but there's a lot of work that goes in the background. And if any of you guys are looking for a young person who is just, I mean, tenacious and so driven, great work ethic, this is a young lady I, I, I highly recommend. I mean, words are not adequate for me to say how, how good a worker this young lady is. Dina, thank you so much for all the work that you do. The Danian Day Day Thomas is serving as our production uh, to intern, and he is responsible for the making sure that all the programs that you missed are available so you can see them again on on um, on 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 uh, online. We also have another young man working with us, Neil. And Neil is our uh, photographer, and he is responsible for making sure that all our graphics are done every week. And Neil attends Village Academy and also a proud product of KOP Mentoring Network. I see my screen is freezing on me here, Eric. If it can go wrong, they say it will go wrong. So. Let's see. Tonight we have as they say in this business, if it can go wrong, it will go wrong, guys. Okay. Here we go. Okay. We have, if you will, Dina, you can put, right, Community Conversation has been growing in front of your very eyes, young people, over the last couple of weeks.
We have gone from just meeting here on WebEx to tonight. We're launching, our, as I said, our simulcasting, which is our very first live broadcast on uh, Boca Raton TV. We've come a, lo a very long way. And uh, if you're interested in joining us, you can you can view us at Boca Raton TV on Facebook, on on all the other platforms that we have. Again, tonight's forum, guys, is an opportunity for our youth to hear from our leaders and our role models in our community. It was launched back in February when we heard from, a, since February, we had a plethora of guests in these days when we had to, we're forced to adjust the way we do business. We in the mentoring world were also forced to alter the way we we reimagine, re if you will, the way we mentor our young people. So if you have an idea or a topic you'd like to hear, put it over there. if you'd like to hear us address, please send that to us. Uh, you can text it to us and Dina will make every effort to make that happen. You can put that in the chat as well. She's monitoring that. Now, I'm sure you've been following the news on the reopening of the public schools over the last couple of weeks. We have our school board member here, as I said, she's here with us. And we will be working on getting our superintendent to join us in the coming weeks. One thing we do know that, though, seniors. We know that we only have a few more weeks to get our final houses in order for college. And as most of the adults within the sound of my voice know, many and too many young people graduate every year without an opportunity to go to college. And that's basically because their financial orders, our houses are not in order. It is even more critical now, folks, that we may not be having, a, since we may not be having our in-person college tours, and I hope Mr. Latour will be able to address this later, but I'm hoping that, I'm not sure what plans are in place to have the college fair. We plan, we do plan to have that in sometime between September and November virtually. Can you hear me? Okay, not sure if you guys can hear me out there still. You can? Yes, you. we can hear you. Thank you, somehow. We have a new feature, guys. Each week, we're gonna kick off the show with what we call Gem, which is Great Educated Mind Session. And this, that's our Gem session where we're gonna hear from college students and they will talk a little about college life, hurdles, in high school that you should avoid. And you get a chance to really pick their brains on anything you would like to know about and seek help prepare you for, for graduation. We have, I see we have a few members of a few fraternities and sororities who will be joining us to encourage you on this importance or on the importance of graduating high school and going on to college. Some of you have already been quite vocal on the pros and cons of virtual learning. You can please put your, please folks, put your phones on mute. We're getting background noise here. Please put your phones on mute. Thank you. Some of you have been quite vocal on the pros and cons of virtual learning, so we will give you a chance to be heard, as well as hear from some speakers on the topic. We also have a special guest called the Baby Billionaire. It's a young black woman here from Palm Beach County who made her first million before she graduated high school. Okay. She attended Dr. Robinson's alma mater, her beloved Harvard, or rather Howard University, and she has since been empowering young people 
on how to be better than she was. She's going to be joining us in a few weeks. Again, if you have a question you'd like to ask any of those people, please send them to info at kopmn.org and we will make sure it's passed on to the guests. Again, our topic next Friday will be getting that college education by any means necessary. In the final week, the final week, we will hear from some college students who will be here and they're gonna share again some pointers with you on how to maneuver your way in your senior year. Okay, so we look forward to having you guys in the coming week. Tomorrow, July 25th, you can win some money in our financial literacy game. That will be from 2 p.m. to 4 on this same platform. In, 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 the, in the chat, you'll find the link to join us tomorrow, and Dina will be sending that out as well. Thank you again. Finally, thank you to all of you guys who called the city of Delray Beach to appeal so that we can get a now vacant home to which we plan to convert into a literacy learning lab. It'll be on the August agenda, so we will keep you in mind. Guys, if you are a Delray Beach resident and you're falling behind on your rent, the city has some money available to help you. and. So have your parent call the Neighborhood Resource Center. Not, do not sure if Dina has the flyer up, should be up on your screen. Call the Neighborhood Resource Center, and that's at 243-7280, 243-7280. Again, I'm not sure you can see this on your screen. We're working remotely, so I'm not sure what you can see on your screen. Young lady, young man, listen. We're trying to create opportunities. We try to create a platform so you can practice at home to sharpen your skills. And guess who knows what? You never know how you're going to get those breaks. I see we have some parents. We have some parents and adults on the line tonight. For those of you joining us for the very first time, tonight's forum was actually birth from the coronavirus when the when the students were home with nothing to do. So the, the leaders of EJS Project, KOP Mentoring, and the Malagra Center, we got together and formed this one-hour session as an avenue for the children to get some answers to their questions. We certainly welcome you tonight, and we're glad that you're with us. Now that we are all virtual, at least until December, we're asking you to please, sir, please, ma'am, invest a few hours in these, our future leaders. We're committed to doing our part, and we just hope that you can join in. If you can have some time to invest, please contact us at info at KOPMN. You may be a good administratively, you may be a good fundraiser, or you, you may be good at marketing. Or you may know you may know someone who can help us out. Please again contact us, and we'd be happy and grateful for your help. Speaking of opening the door, Dina, can you get that flyer, please? Every Tuesday and Thursday since March, my team has been delivering boxes of food to at least seventy families in our service area. Some of you guys have received one-on-one -on -one tutoring at the library and throughout the year we look rather we took you on various several field trips and college tours there's a hectic cost a huge cost to doing that although you did not have to pay for it now there's a group of people who made that happen and we call them our sponsors so, so let me take a moment and acknowledge and thank our sponsors for making all this happening. Okay, we have the community conversation, which happens to be a part of that. I'm not sure if you can see the screen out there, but just to read them, we have the United Way of Palm Beach County. We have the Community Foundation of Part Palm Beach and Martin Counties. We have Quantum Foundation. Riviera Beach, CRA, CDC, 
and we have the Boca Raton Tribune. Again, thank you very much for your support. Now, finally, let me just say, how many of you guys enjoy a party? All right, see the hands? I do. You do. Okay. I do. Well, we're about, we're about to turn the heat up. It's hot in here where I am right now, but this ain't nothing yet. We know that after school starts in a few weeks and after staring at the computer all week long, it's going to be a challenge to get you guys to hang out with us on a Friday night. So we're going to do what we call Zumba Happy Hour. That's going to be between 5.30 and 6.30 every Friday evening. So you can go from Zumba to Community Connection. I know Dina has a flyer. I think it's up. If not, the instructor will be with us next week to tell us everything we need to know about Zumba and more. Ms. Smith, are you on the line? Okay, she's not. Yes, I am. You yes, are. I am. You okay, are. is there anything you want to add now before we go? Oh, no, just get ready. August uh, 7th, every Friday from 5.30 to 6.30. It's going to be a party right in your living room, so get ready. That's it. Hey, I heard Thank she you. will have a lot of goodies and giveaways, so go ahead and sign up. The number is at the bottom of the screen on that flyer, Miss 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 Smith. Uh, the number for them to call to sign up. 954-775-5548. And I will have additional information where uh, you can sign up and get the, fill out the registration form. Thank and you. guys, that yeah. number, thank you, Ms. Smith. Number is 954-775-5548. Let's bring on Ms. Jasmine Collins. Good evening, Ms. Collins. Thank you for being here as our very first, our inaugural gym, Ms. Great Educated Minds. How are you this evening? Ms. Collins? Good. How are you? Very well, very well. Great having you with us this evening. Now, you started uh, Florida State University last fall, but you're considered a junior now. In other words, you 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 skipped two years. Uh, what happened there, Jasmine? Help, help us explain that. Um, so in high school, my freshman year, I started taking ACE and AP courses that would earn me college credit at the end of the year after you take the test. So I graduated um, with my ACE diploma, which gave me like 21 college credits. And then I also did dual enrollment during my junior, starting junior year summer and also my senior year to get more credits. So I ended up starting with about like 42 credits going into- Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now, Jasmine, what was it like to be a first year college student in, in, in what's it like? Um, it's kind of difficult um, just because like, well, I decide to go away from home. So like getting used to a new environment is going to be like a little bit challenging, but also starting with the college courses that were like very heavy in writing and not like multiple choice fill in the blank that get a lot easier to to like how they do classes in college. And then also I started um I went to FSU for the summer semester before I started mm. freshman year. So that was allowing me to like get used to the campus and like see how they ran classes before like everybody. Now those last summer, so you didn't have a summer, you didn't have a summer break last summer, right? No. Wow, Jasmine, what's a typical day like on, on, on campus? How much time do students spend studying per week? Um, it depends on like how many classes and credits that you have. I usually take about like five classes differing between like regular lecture classes and also labs since I am studying for the medical field. So I have some labs for like biology and stuff like that. 
but they have like a recommendation that you study for three hours a week per the amount of credits that you're taking. So if you have one class that's worth three credits, then you should be studying for like nine hours per class per week and then per how many classes that you're taking. So me and my friends spend a lot of time like in the library or in different dining areas to just work and you mentioned dining areas how's the food on campus the food is pretty good i got a meal plan after i started i originally did not have a meal plan but i saw that it was a lot more costly for me just because how much time i spent like on campus and in the different dining areas and there's two dining halls at FSU, which you can go in and use a meal swipe at any time. And they have a plethora of food from like salad. They have a grilled station. They have a sub station, a whole dessert menu that you could see what food you can have every day. Eat. And they also have a nutritionist that you can go to if you have any allergies or anything. And they will make food special for you. You have allergies, and then they also have like normal good food that people love to eat, like chicken, pizza, that on campus. Okay, seem like you seem like that's all right. That's the place I need to be now, guys. You have a chance to to ask ask uh, ask Jasmine some questions later on. Uh, save your questions until later in uh in the, in the in the show and you'll have a chance to to ask her that jasmine uh what do you do when you're not in class and on the weekends what's that like well fsu they always have something going on on campus they have a movie theater on campus so there's usually movies going on playing every night so sometimes we go to the movies or they have like around the city, they have regular stuff like bowling alleys or roller rinks. And then all of the different organizations and some of the fraternities and sororities also have events going on almost like every day. So we go to like ice cream socials and like just a bunch of different things that are really fun around campus. The, um, the, Rec Center also has a, a bunch of activities, we have like movies in the pool and a bunch of different classes you can take, like dance classes. Uh, and then FSU specifically, they have um, a property on a lake with a, they have paddle boarding and kayaking and volleyball and yeah, outdoor um like ropes course that you can also go to and they also have a bus that will take you there okay now jasmine as you think back what do you wish you knew when you were in high school that could have made things easier for you in other words what would you tell your 17 or 18 year old self um i would say to just stay focused on like all the goals I'm trying to accomplish. I had very good like mentors and leaders in my life that told me everything I needed to know to get into colleges and who like helped me apply. Um, they taught me to be in a lot of clubs and different organizations while I was in high school that you can also or earn cords for during graduation. And also like volunteering, I had to do for to graduate. But also, I like to volunteer around the community, so I ended up with about like 500 volunteer hours by graduation, working in hospitals and going to different walks and stuff. That was really on your application and for like personal statement stuff. They would know about you when you're applying and things like that will help them to see like who you are just beyond your GPA. You mentioned you have some you had some mentors and leaders 
uh, who helped you along the way. You, I'm sure they're still part of your network right now. Am I correct? Yes. Good. Well, Jasmine, I want to thank you for being our on, on GEM session tonight. Stay tuned. Uh, stand by. We will have some more questions for you later on. Now, let's bring in Doc. Doc, uh, she's still there. Dr. Robinson, if my memory serves me well, you are the elder states person on the school board. Am I correct? Meaning the longest serving? Yes. <laughs> how, many, <laughs> how, many, how many years that is? Um, 20 years. 20 years. Wow. Now, what's the most important job of our school board members? And what's a, what's a typical day like for you as a board member? Well, so the role of the board, the school board, we're an elected body. It's seven um, members on the school board. We're elected in single member districts, which means only the people who live in, in the district can vote for us. Um, which is something that changed about 20 years ago so that we could improve the representation on the school board. Uh, but our role is essentially to um, oversee the budget and the policies. Um, the superintendent is our employee. Um, and then we have three employees, the superintendent, the inspector general, and the general counsel, who's the chief attorney for the school district. Every other employee of the school district is actually an employee of the superintendent. So we're a governing mm -hmm. board. Um, we are not technically in the day-to-day -day operations, even though um, some people will accuse each of us of micromanaging. <laughs> so um, yeah, that, so that's basically, that's basically it. We're a governing body to oversee the um, the operations of the district. Okay, got you. Now, that, you know, whether you realize it or not, our our public education system have already begun to, 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 to morph into what they will eventually become in the future. And that movement towards change, major change that began, that began uh, quietly in the early 1980s or so, that movement has been picking up speed ever since, and is now in the process of bringing sweeping changes, if you will, to how we how we educate our young people. Whether they'll be good for society or bad, which movement tell, are you talking about? One thing I do know: either way, they're here to stay. What which movement are we talking about? Though? What was that? What movement are you talking about? Be clear what do you see as the future role of public education in our society? I think the the role of public education has not changed. The role of public education is is supposed to be to educate everyone, right? So we take all comers. We take the those whose parents can't afford to send them to private school. We take the ones who, you know, in foster care, we, we take folks who are down on their luck. We take those who are doing well, like some of your, the students that you just featured are just outstanding. Um, so we are the, the place where everyone comes. Everyone is, is welcome to come. Now, do you believe all children can perform at grade level, including those in low performing, high poverty schools? Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. So, you know, we can have a lot of talk about equity, right? So uh -huh. people, this is the new catchphrase. Everybody wants to talk about equity. But the bottom line is everybody brings gifts and talents to the table, right? Everybody brings experience experiences to the table. Jasmine talked about the people that influenced her and encouraged her and pushed her. There's some young people who are not so blessed, right? That does not mean that they cannot succeed. The challenge is for the school district to allocate its resources such that we are lifting up and encouraging and pushing and prodding um, those who are not as fortunate as Jasmine. Right. Because 
everybody everybody can perform on grade level. It's a function of um, in having the student be engaged in their own education. And that's where we really missed the mark, I think. It's a function of having um, the appropriate curriculum. And I think that I, I have some criticisms of the curriculum that we use, and I also continue right, to work right. to improve it, right? Um, but the bottom line is for the, th the things that this society believes are the important things, we have those things in the curriculum, right? Um, we can continue to work to improve the skills of our teaching force. But the bottom line is, is not about those kind of technical things, it's about the human quality. So, so now we are doing a, more training on culturally responsive teaching, because it's all about engaging the student. You know, I mean, I remember, you know, teachers who would not call on me and I would raise my hand and they considered me to be a troublemaker because I was bored in class and I would talk. So right. therefore they would punish me by ignoring me. Well, that did not that did not help me. I just decided that, you know, I was not going to engage in, in that class. Well, fortunately, I had blessings similar to Jasmine. I had a family who told me, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, excuse me, you're going to get your lessons. But the way they got in my head was to tell me, yes, if that teacher does not like you, the way you get back at her is not by withdrawing, it's by getting a hundred on all her tests. That mm -hmm. was not crazy, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And I can name the names of the teachers <laughs> that that was that was my focus, okay, for um for doing well in school, you know. So um, you know, I mean we we definitely have room for improvement, but every every child, every child can do well in school. Okay. Okay. Well, thanks for that. Let's uh, let's talk. Let's talk money now. Um, let me just acknowledge our latest partner on uh, community conversation, the man of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, Omicron Upsilon Lambda chapter. I see also another brother, John from Charlotte, North Carolina, on the line. Thanks and welcome, brothers. You young people, you'll be hearing a lot more. From these men over the, the coming weeks and coming months as they assist in guiding you on this journey that we call life. Now, for many of the seniors and their families that we that we we, we serve, finding money for college is is as challenging as the the Miami Dolphins uh, winning the Super Bowl next year. But the, Financial burden of higher education can be can be a huge hurdle. Mr. Snow, your dad started this initiative to send some some students off to school some years ago. What was what was his story? How did he how did he do this, and why did he do this? Well, uh, a lot of people think that my dad left a lot of money to the organization, but the truth is that my dad did not start the organization. We created this uh, uh, two years after he passed away in a helicopter accident. Um, but while he was alive, he was always trying to help young people that were trying to help themselves. And he started his career as a high school math teacher, actually teaching at Seacrest High, which right, was right. no longer around. But uh, uh, he was very passionate about, uh, again, helping young people that were trying to help themselves. So. We wanted to create this in his name and honor uh, the work that he was doing while he was alive. And so we did that in 1980. So we were celebrating, uh, uh, actually we did in 1982. We celebrated our first year of Okay. Uh, Mr. Mr. Aquino, the uh, Community Foundation of uh, Palm Beach and Martin Counties provides uh, monies for several nonprofit organizations to operate. In fact, when 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 COVID-19 struck, uh, several small nonprofits were forced to close their doors because their sources of funding dried up. Let me just uh, parenthetically say thanks to your organization. Not only were we able to do our after school program between February and May, we 
ran a very robust uh, aviation program and a summer camp where our students were engaged with their peers in, in Italy, in France, Canada, Cuba, and all across the United States, thanks to you guys. Not only do you help organizations, you also provide funds for students to pursue a college education. Tell me more about that, please. Yeah, yeah. so um, we, we've we been running our scholarship program since the early 80s as well. Mm -hmm. um, we've developed it through the, the generous philanthropy of just a uh, multitude of donors. Actually, some of some of our scholarship funds were some of our earliest um, funds here at the Community Foundation. And um, we just have a very unique um, uh, a service that we offer the community in that we can help uh, connect donors to their joy of giving to what they are passionate about. And oftentimes, so many are passionate about education and post-secondary attainment. And so because of that, you know, in the lifetime of our scholarship program, we've, we've awarded over $15 million to um, about 2,500 students. Um, each year, we award about 100 um, students, an average of about $10,000 each. Now that's spread out four years, of course. So uh, each year, we award about a million dollars in scholarship. Mm. Uh, and really, our focus in that too is not the kind of not just the kind of scholarships that get kids into the door of college, but helps them actually persist and complete. Um, and I, I, I can't speak enough to our partners in, the, in that mission with uh, uh, Mr. Snow and the George Snow Foundation. Um, you know, we, we work very closely together. We're always in communication, and it's, it's really great to kind of see our collaboration allow for so many students to get meaningful scholarships to not only attend school, but persist and complete. Okay. Well, the... Uh... You guys, the, the foundation, community foundation, do you all provide one year or multi year uh, awards? Yeah, so that actually depends on the amount that the student is awarded. Um, so oftentimes um, it, it varies. So I said that our average is about 10,000, but we have some students receive $40,000 scholarships. We have some students receive $2,000 scholarships. So we really kind of try to make it um, make however much a student gets awarded. Um, be the most meaningful. Um, and so it really just kind of depends on the different um, funds that we're working with, the funds that we're working with, and um, the students and how they match up with the activity that we're looking for. Okay. Okay, guys, if you want, you can uh, send your question either in the chat or you can text them to 561 665 for those of you on uh, Boca Raton TV, I see those coming through. I'll get to those in a minute. Ms. Latour, we have, uh, we've worked on many, many projects over the years, and I sincerely uh, appreciate you being with us uh, this evening, even though you've moved on to greater things. Now, now the pandemic has, has surely altered the way our children pursue a four-year college education. Uh, some are taking a gap year and, and working to raise money. Some are going to community college. Some are doing so through virtual classes. Some are dual enrollment in high school. As you know, many families are facing tight financial crunch. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on, on taking a gap year in, in this environment? Hi, Steven. Number one, I want to thank you for this opportunity. Um, hi, everyone. Um, personally, I don't believe in a gap year. I will tell every student, if you cannot take 12 credits, at least take one class. It is very important that you keep yourself busy and you keep yourself going, okay? I know it's not the right moment. Everything is difficult, but you're not alone. Everyone is online, okay? A lot of universities have shut down and everyone is going online. In fact, if you are still in school, in high school, I would say take the opportunity to familiarize yourself a little bit more with the online uh, programs because, you know, in everything, there is an opportunity to learn. Right now, I know it's very difficult online, but think about those 
college students who have never taken online classes, maybe one, are forced right now to take all their classes online. So um, use that opportunity to schedule yourself appropriately um, so that if you end up transitioning, because we don't know what's going to happen. And guys, I can promise you that in the history, I've worked for Palm Beach County for more than 20 years. And in January, I could never foresee <laughs> this, okay? It was surreal to me. I could not, I, I could not wrap my head around what was happening. It was real. It was real personally because I have kids and I was trans transitioning my kids as well as I was transitioning and also helping my student understand going on. So um, there's always light at the, at the tunnel. So take that opportunity, schedule yourself appropriately. Um, take the opportunity to um, study online, give yourself a schedule. It's very, very important to give yourself a schedule because all the college students are online. The majority of them are online. And the other situation that a lot of them starting in August are going to be online. Now, I understand several students are choosing to take a gap year. Um, if, if you have to, you don't have any option, um, but I know financial aid is, is still available. Financial aid right now is around $5,700 per year. So at least may be able to take one or two or a couple of classes. Um, either if you don't have to stay on campus, for instance, at a state university, um, that financially will cover your course, your, uh, your tuition. Now, if you can't go, Palm Beach State is definitely open. Um, a lot of the first year classes are the same. Um, in most universities, you have to take your English, your math, your science, um, all the prerequisites. So take a couple of classes and then start building stuff up. And then once things open, you can actually go back on campus and do your thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, this question is for Dr. Robinson. We know we have the the school district has policies in place, but what are the steps beyond those policies should the district take to protect students from violence as well as harassment? Well, we have, so, okay. So I get stuck on this word policy. So policy is kind of our equivalent of law. There's a lot of things beyond policy that we have. So we have hotlines, um, we have the app, that, what is it called, student protect, that students can report on, right? But I think the main thing is that we need to make sure to, we need to encourage young people who are being bullied to report it, mm -hmm. right? And I would always encourage parents to report it in writing, right? So if the, the students should report it to a school administrator, but I would encourage the parents to follow that up with an email to the school administrator. Um, uh, sometimes, unfortunately, I think we don't take things as seriously as we should. Um, and so that's why I encourage that follow-up. Okay. DJ, you had a question? Deron? Yes, I have a question. Identify yourself, Deron. Identify yourself, please. My name is Deron Blake Jr., third grade student at North Rural Elementary School. Fourth grade at North Rural Elementary School, and I am vice president of the KLP Swan Eagles. And my question to you is. What is a good start to get to help raise your financial plan, financial plans for college? Say that again, DJ. 
how to how to raise your financial plan so when college comes you have the money you need to get into a good college see when you want me to try yes, to yes yes go ahead hi dj thank you for um that question and, and I, first of all i have to applaud you Okay, I have never had an elementary student being so eloquent <laughs> and asking questions for college. Um, one of the things I want you to understand, and anybody can jump in, is that um, financial aid is also, uh, when you're asking for aid, there is scholarships, and then there is aid. Aid, um, financial aid in terms of um, um, financial aid for the government is tied to your parents. Um, um, the amount of money that your parents make. However, the scholarship part is tied to what you are doing right now in order to prepare yourself um, for college. So in that country, um, I would suggest try to not only do well, excel, take advanced classes. Um, and, and also the track that I would like to see for you because the sense I'm getting from a student like you who, who are so well-spoken, yeah, try to start taking middle school classes in elementary. Mm. For it, okay? And by the time you reach middle school, by seventh grade, you should be able to take algebra one. That opens doors for you. That opens wonders for you. That means by the time you reach high school, you could have um, gotten at least three to four high school credits in middle school. And that is achievable because you're talking about algebra one in seventh grade, geometry in eighth grade. And along with that, you can do a language. You can start with Spanish one in, eighth, in seventh grade, Spanish two in eighth grade. And there you go with your four high school credits, which is in fact almost equivalent to it is equivalent to a semester of ninth grade because a semester of nine is three and a half credits so you are a bit ahead of the game so that when you start high school you start strong you start taking ap classes like jasmine in ninth grade start accumulating college credits in ninth grade and then by the time you graduate you will be offered a lot of scholarships. Colleges and universities will be really attracted to you to offer you scholarship because you'll be a student who actually has accomplished a lot. Okay, and I'm sure as the vice president, you probably know about community service. So start early on collecting your community service hours. The more hours you have, the better off you are. Um, and and, and uh, I don't know if I answered your question um, correctly. Excuse me, Mr. Tor. Why you're why you're still uh, why you're there? Uh, I have one here. Should I take the ACT or SAT? And do I need SAT subject tests and AP exams? Which one should I take? Okay, so I tell all my students, um, you, you need to understand the logic behind both tests. Um, the ACT is more um, ACT is more geometry based. The SAT, on the other hand, is more algebra two based. So I would say to students, take it early on and see which ones you actually do better. Than. And then you can increase from there. Okay. I have students that I have seen, and again, they do both. And then some will say, you know what, I prefer the SAT. And I'll say, okay, so you will continue on the track of the SAT and practice on that one. And I've seen students making piece of 50 to 100 points at a time. Um, I have other students who do better on the ACT. Okay. Either one can be used. Um, I think there's another part to the question. Now for the AP, the AP subject area is actually recommended if you can take it. If you go on college board, you will see, first of all, you will see other universities that may or may not require that AP subject 
um, area test, but it's really to strengthen your college application. Okay, um, for the advanced placement courses, the AP courses, definitely, I would definitely say try to at least get one in high school. Very, very important. It does prepare you for college. It's a college level class. Now, take the test because the rigor will help you understand how college is. Now, if you obtain a level three or above on the test, you will get college credits. Okay, but it's worth taking it. It's an opportunity for you to understand how college is by taking those investment courses. Mr. Snow and Mr. Aquino, uh, what can the money be used for and when can students use their scholarship? The freshman year, next fall, immediately. Can you address those, please? Mr. Snow first. Yeah, so we write the check to the school. So the student can utilize uh, that, that money for anything that's related to their educational expenses. So it can go towards tuition, room and board, uh, books, uh, just really anything that they get through the school, they can utilize our funding uh, uh, for their education. <clears throat> and then uh, for us, it's, it's fairly similar as well. Um, uh, it depends on the exact fund that a student gets awarded, but mm. generally speaking, um, ours ours is generally the same as the as the Snow Scholarship. So anything towards your cost of attendance, uh, your school lists uh, that are that counts as a education expense uh, that they recognize. Um, the majority of our scholarships will allow for that. We have some that are tuition and books only, you know, stuff like that. But that just it, those are kind of one offs, and it just depends. But for the majority of our scholarships, it's that. And then um, how to answer your question, when they can use them. Uh, we generally, um, we our application window starts in October. So when this thing called the FAFSA opens up, which hopefully some of you guys um, that are going into college this year have already filled out your FAFSA. Um, we, we open our scholarship when the FAFSA opens and then we close it around the end of So, uh, you said when do you close it? Uh, around the end of January. Okay. Um, and so, so guys, get your get your paperwork in order in time. Say by before Christmas, then. Oh, definitely, for right. sure. Yep. And then uh, we do we make our awards around mid April, and then the students can use them in their first full year of school. Um, and so whenever you've arrived at your college or university is when you're eligible to um, have the payments uh, be dispersed. And us as well, we pay the school directly. So we handle all of the, the, the movement of funds for the students. So we send a text directly to the school. We write the text to the school. Um, so we just handle all that for you guys. Okay. And I take it these funds, these funds, uh, these, uh, Funds are renewable, right? Yeah, we uh, we give uh, a four year commitment to the students. I think Eric does predominantly uh, as well. Uh, it's very important that the students know that they have that support throughout the uh, throughout their college career. And so, whatever the award is, we divide it into eight separate payments, uh, two payments per year. Uh, for their college careers. Okay. Okay. Thank Cordeja. Go ahead. You have a question. Sorry. Um. Yes. Introduce um, yourself and state your question, please. My name is Cordeja Cersei, and I'm from um, Atlantic High. Little School. louder. Little louder. We can't hear you. My name is Cordeja Cersei, and I'm from Atlantic High School, and I'm going into 12th grade this year. Hmm. And my question is, um, for AP classes, not for AP classes, not um, every school takes them. So, like, would you kind of more recommend dual enrollment instead? I would. Uh, I'll jump in. Um, I would. I would say that that would depend on the subject. So, um, if you know, take whatever subject you feel like you're strong in in the, in the AP, AP courses, and then um, if they don't offer a specific type of course you want to get as an AP, then definitely pursue it as a enrollment. But um, 
just my personal experience, I took probably equal amount of dual enrollment in AP classes in high school. So it's really just kind of a thing, I would say. Okay, Jasmine, I have a question for you. It is, what is the, what kind of things are there to do in Tallahassee? And is there a social scene there? What is it like if there's one? Jasmine? Okay, yeah. I guess someone wants to know, is there a social scene in Tallahassee and what is there to do on weekends? Um, there's a lot of things to do on weekends. Um, one okay, I think we lost her. Dr. Robinson. If a district employee is in fear of contracting the virus and is ordered to come back to work, what recourse, if any, does that employee have? So we are in the process of working out those protocols, but I think the short answer is um, they can get a note from their physician and use their sick leave. Mm -hmm. Um, or, or, you know, but they're, or they can ask to be reassigned. You know, right. one of the things that I expect us to do is, for example, for teachers that have, um, you know, a high risk, um, for coronavirus due to underlying medical issues or age that we would provide them as much of an opportunity as we can to teach the distance classes when right. we go back into school. So there will there should there will be a point in time when some students um will be able to go back into the school buildings and have class and others will choose to stay home and so and, and do distance learning. So we have to work to make sure as best we can that we provide opportunities for those um who want to do um distance teaching for example. But I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, let's just get real. At the end of the day, it could come down to like my son is a civil engineer and basically it came down to, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> you can, you can take all the precautions, but you need to come to work if you want to get paid. So, and okay. that's life. So I, 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 I want to throw one thing out. Can Dude, I, I, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I just want to say to Mr. Snow that one of his scholarship recipients, um, Isis Benjamin, is my mentee. And just to say thank you, because she just graduated from Spelman. Dr. Robinson, do you think three weeks is enough time to help the teachers of Palm Beach County get ready for teaching and distant learning? Well, actually, they're going to have less than three weeks. So I was fighting for three weeks, mm -hmm. um, but they're going to have, it's. I think it's basically seven duty days, if I count correctly. We added two more days um, to the preschool calendar for the teachers at Wednesday's board meeting. But, you know, this is the thing, though. There's been classes going all summer uh, that the teachers can do additional training if if they if they're motivated you know and then hopefully we learned an awful lot from the spring what we call in distance learning 1.0 so and i guess on the same vein doc it's there's one here say my child is prone to illness what should i do as far as sending this child back to school <laughs> listen i you know <laughs> okay, so first okay. off, I don't know when we're going to open the school buildings back for students. I have been fighting hard. And because I am a retired internal medicine physician, I think that I understand um, the risk 
better than the career educators, you know? Um, and so at this point, we're working on outlining the, the metrics, the, the data points that we will look at to evaluate when we do a partial reopening, even mm -hmm. though a large measure is going to be based upon when the governor moves Palm Beach County from phase one to phase two. So that's just a whole lot. I'm sorry, that's like that's too much information to answer your question. But like this seems to be my world lately. Um, my bottom line is this with the numbers that they the way they are right now. If the governor woke up tomorrow and declared Palm Beach County to be in phase two and therefore we would be in the position of having this partially reopened schools, my grandchildren ain't going. OK, I'm just telling you. So I can't tell a parent what to do. I'm only telling you about mine. Let me ask you a question, Doc. What do I need to do if I want to be like Dr. Deborah Robinson, both in a, as a medical doctor and as a fighter? What? What do I need to? I'm just asking the question. What do I need to do if I want to be like Dr. Deborah Robinson? What do I need to do in life to be like you? This young lady wants to be like Dr. Robinson. What oh, should she do to be like Dr. Robinson? <laughs> be like Jasmine. So, listen, so I didn't have AP classes, right? I don't even know if AP existed way back then, right? Um, but I did always end up taking the highest level classes, especially math and science yeah. offered, you know, in, in my school, like in high school. That in large measure was due to my parents pushing me. Right. And so, again, you know, anybody can perform at that level, but you have to work. Right. And so. And, so, and too often we act like children are supposed to be internally motivated. My motivation was external, right? So my parents were the ones who motivated me to do well in school until, well, my mother died when I was 15, at which point I figured out that the world wasn't promised to me and that I needed to prepare myself. And so, you know, I went to Michigan State undergrad. I got a bachelor's of science in biology and with honors in three years mostly because I was afraid and I wanted to hurry up and get through school. And then I went to Howard and let see, Ron, I need you to get that straight. Don't you ever twist your lips again. Doc, I was my trying name to promote and you to the, and say, Howard. I was trying to promote you to one of the top education institutions in this country. I went I to Howard University. Of top Howard University the in this country. OK, and let me tell you what, at Howard University College of Medicine, we had students from Harvard rotating with us and they could not hold the candle. OK, so let's not get this twisted. And I'm I agree. Harvard, Harvard is, is I mean, right Howard, here. excuse me, Howard is the capstone of Negro education. I understand Doc. Thank you. It is the capstone of African education in the current century and the past century. So yes, let's not get this twisted now. Mm -hmm. So we can have this system and this structure that promotes certain people and denies others, tell us who is the best university. Right. Like, I'm just gonna tell you, okay? I'm gonna tell you what I know, cause I'm second generation. My son is civil engineer, third generation Howard graduate. My husband's got a bachelor's of science and physics from Notre Dame. I told you about my bachelor's in biology. I met mm -hmm. my husband at Howard University College of Medicine. So mm -hmm. let us be clear about one thing, right? You can get an education or you, or you can know who you are. So if you want to be like Dr. Robinson, as you said the question was, then you need to carry yourself to an HBCU because you need to understand yes, from which you came and who your people are and how great you are. Despite all these myths Preach. that they tell us every day. Okay? Yes, ma'am. So let's, let's not get yes, that twisted. And Why, did you you Howard, Doc? Uh -uh. Why did you choose Howard University? I chose Howard University because when I went for the interview, I saw black folks of all different shapes and sizes speaking all these different languages with all these different degrees after their name. And it made me proud, right? Mm -hmm. It made me proud to be at such a place. All right. So, but let me tell you something. My husband and I told our three sons, you can go to any university you want, but you won't get any of our money unless it's the HBCU. Okay, mm -hmm. got 107 of them because there's something that is something you get in your soul 
when you are in a space, you don't have to deal with the day-to-day microaggressions in this racist society, okay? And when you mm-hmm. feel that, when you mm-hmm. know what that is, when you feel that, have that freedom, that can't be taken from you, okay? And so then you learn. You learn that if you black, you got to be three times as good. And guess what? Mm-hmm. They will ensure that you are. Okay, because let me tell you about my class at Howard University College of Medicine, class in mm-hmm. 1981. Yes, First ma'am. school class in this nation's history. Yes, queen. To 100% Educate. to pass part two of the National Boards on the first track, okay? So don't you ever get that twisted again, T. Ron. Now, you now, now you see why I love Doc so much, because she keeps it real with my kids. Rose, you have a question. We have time for about three more questions. Rose, you have a question. Yeah, Go ahead. She keeps it real and statistical and factual. I love it. Rose, go ahead. Oh, no, my question is... Ms. Latour, what advice would you give to an IB student taking AP classes and doing dual, dual enrollment at the same time? Um, if you can handle it, go for it. I'm telling you. That's a lot. Make sure you sleep. Can you Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So I was saying if, if, if a student can, I would prefer IB. If you're already in the IB program, um, definitely continue with the IB. If you can take additional AP courses or do a woman, go for it. Because you are the one who actually, as a guidance counselor, um, students who were high achievers were the one driving their schedule. They will tell me when to stop. And I will sit with them individually and say, okay, tell me what you want. Let's see if you can handle it. How, how did you do previously? If you did well, I have no reason to, <laughs> to question you, basically. Definitely, the more the merrier. If you can handle it, keep challenging yourself. Okay. Ms. Snow and Ms. Kina, uh, how, how do you determine the financial need of your awardees? And in addition to scholarship awards, uh, and support. What other benefits do your recipients receive, if any? Tim? So, uh, in terms of uh, uh, figuring out their financial need, we look at the financial aid package that the students get from their schools. I think Eric does uh, very much the same thing. Um, you know, some schools will give great uh, financial aid packages, uh, institutional money. Uh, because all of our students are um, have a financial need, uh, uh, you know, a lot of times they're getting federal money, institutional money, state money. So we're just trying to make up the difference between what they're getting uh, from both three sources, uh, and so that they can graduate with little or no debt. As far as the things that we do for them over and above the scholarship. Um, we actually we do a lot of things if they need a computer we get them a computer uh we have an emergency fund for our students and in this time of uh uh of the covid 19 we've been uh doling out a lot of money for that emergency fund, paying for people's rent and getting send them, uh gift public's gift cards etc we send them care packages really for us when we when they become uh, when they get a scholarship from us, they become part of our family and we do for them what we would do for our own sons and daughters. That's, that's how we right. love our kids. Yeah, okay. And just to echo that myself, um, you know, we look, we really tried to look at the total, um, the total picture when it comes to every student, you know, what their household income is, um, you know, what potential federal and state aid they can get. Um, institutional aid, um, and then we yeah, and then we also just look at the school and you know just kind of look at. What Sometimes we don't have a complete picture, um, but you know we work to work with our students and help them. And then one thing that we do that's a distinctive program is we have an extremely flexible um, uh, uh, disbursement schedule. But we we recognize that. Uh, those schools 
you know, take four, four years to complete a bachelor's degree. We understand that, strictly speaking, it takes anywhere between four and six years to complete college. And we really want to encourage participants, especially if it takes longer than traditionally. So, you know, we have different uh, preferred policies that allow us to a lot of time as students. So, for instance, if um, they they have to take a year off because of, of family health reasons or personal reasons, you know, we'll hold their funds for them and allow them to use them in future years. Um, if a student graduates with excess scholarship dollars for one reason or another, we allow them to use it in grad school or over the summer. So, we really try to work with our students. Uh, Again, not just get in the door, but persist and complete. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Miss. Mr. Oh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, uh, Cordesia. Mr. Latour, how do you feel about the National Honor Society of High School Scholars? What are your thoughts on that? You're talking about the. Um... <laughs> I think she means, I think she means the NHS. Oh, it's it's again, it's I would definitely tell students to work hard to be part of, of the honor society. Um it does help. Um as a senior, as I guess her question is as a senior, is it worth joining it this being her last year? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, without a shadow of a doubt. Do not let that opportunity go. Um, you, it, it's definitely going to strengthen your application. Okay, and also be involved. And there are scholarships for the National Honor Society that can, you can apply to well. Okay, there are scholarships offered for members, only members of National Honor Society, and it's only members who are seniors. So as a senior, you have to take advantage of that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Robinson, I'd be remiss if I did not give you the last word for the night. Uh, so, ma'am, you have uh, 23.2 seconds. Okay, thank you. Well, I, um, I thank you for having me on. I, it looks as though you are doing a fantastic job of motivating these young people and keeping them engaged. I just want to say to be safe. Um, this pandemic is real. If you have family members, that, especially this this like 18 to, to 30 year old crew who seem to want to party more than stay safe, ask them to please be safe because you want to be around, you want them around, you want your parents and your grandparents around. So this thing is real. Thank you. Thank you much. Tim? Tim? Yeah. Guys, put your phones on mute, please. Well, thank you for making me a part of this. Uh, I hope everyone, our applications are uh, gonna open up on November 1st. And so I hope everyone will, uh, uh, all of your mentees will uh, take the time to fill out an application for us and for the Community Foundation. Um, there's great opportunities uh in front of them if they just take the time and invest uh that time into completing the application so thank you for making us a part of it and uh, dr robinson thank you for everything that you guys are doing up there at the school board i know it's a trying time for everyone but we appreciate your leadership and uh just want to thank you for all that thank you mr eric yeah, thank you. Thank you all so much for the time. I really appreciate just the, the community that's being built here and just all the fantastic uh, people on the panel. Dr. Robinson, thank you so much for all the wise words and the passion. Um, just full support right behind you. Uh, Tim, always great to work with you. It was good to see you virtually. Um, and C. Ron, thank you so much for putting this all together. I know we had a few bumps at the start, but it's been smooth sailing. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Pleasure is mine. And uh, Miss Farrell Latour. Um, Sivan, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, you are doing a fantastic job as usual. Um, it's always an honor to work with you. Um, thank you, Dr. Robinson, for being our leader. Um, guys, 
um, who, um, um, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> um, if you are in high school, middle school, or elementary, please work hard. Or oh, college, I'm sorry, Jasmine, college. Please work hard. Um, um, it's beautiful on the other side. It's worth it. It's worth every day, every hard work, every sweat. Um, I will tell you, um, as a guidance counselor, I've been a guidance counselor from Palm Beach County for more than 20 years. I've worked in high school for 19 years from Spanish River to Leonard Royal Palm, Warden Beach High, and Village Academy, and now here at Middle. So please, um, if you need any assistance, you have any questions, please, anyone knows how to reach me. Thank you so much. Pleasure, man. Full disclosure, guys. I just so happen to be the face that you see here on a um, on a Friday night. The people behind this are the ones who make this happen. They're my advisors. They're the ones who basically provide the script in front of me. I want to say thanks again to Ms. Blake, Ms. Franklin, Ms. Harrington, Ms. McKenzie, Ms. Smith, and Mr. Doug Young. Because for making thank you for making me look good. Guys, that'll be about it for this week's edition of Community Conversation. Thank you again, Ms. Jasper. Thank you, see Ron. You have a great week. You have a great night. Robinson, Bye, MD, everyone. Or rather, Deborah L. Robinson, MD, Ms. Latour, Mr. Tim Snow, and Mr. Aquina. Young people, there is no greater investment. Listen to me now. There is no greater investment that you can make on a Friday night and be with like-minded people on Community Conversation. Last week, I promised you, I have $50, $50 for you if you could bring 20 friends today. I'm gonna do that. All right, Mr. Anthony's telling me, give you a second chance. I promise you guys, hey, the best is yet to come. I have a, I'm going to extend the surprise next week again. If you can bring 20 friends or family members to community conversation, by the way, for it to count, they have to be between the ages of 8 and 17. Or maybe, you say 18? Okay, maybe 18. 8 and 18, okay? Please try to be on no later than 6.55 so we can have an on-time start. Hopefully all the bugs would have been ironed out and we won't have any challenges again. Again, tonight's show was produced by Ms. Dina Bazu, a student at Milagro Center here in Delray Beach. Our production team, LaDainian Dede Thomas, also from Milagro Center. Thanks again to all our guests and to parents and officers. I see Ms. Uh, DJ Blake on the line and Ms. Janai O'Mara. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, have fun this week. And as Dr. Robinson says, have fun while practicing social distances. Please, my kings and queens, wear your mask. This thing is a beast. It does not discriminate because we do not want you to get sick, okay? You mean a lot to us. And from all of us here, good night.